Hello and uh, welcome to this edition of the Evening Review. My name is Tewen Jabela, your host for tonight. Let's have a quick look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight in the studio we are joined by Henny Saibeb, who is uh, the deputy leader of the Landless People's Movement, to reflect with us on uh, his party's performance in, in last week's regional and local authority election, where the party emerged actually as the biggest opposition uh, in that particular election. Welcome back uh, to the show, Henny. Thanks, and I'm very much humbled and honored to be here today. Yeah, indeed. You, you, you. Let's start. Let's start with your um, with your strategy going into the election, um, because I, I think very few people expected LPM to do as well as they did. Of course, we expected generally that the party would have done well in the south here and there, but uh, to have necessarily claimed the whole of Hardap region and maybe eighty percent or so of uh, of Karas, that, that that's huge. What was your strategy going into this? Yeah, thanks. Uh, what we did, Toivo, after last year's uh, presidential and national assembly elections, is that we said let's go back to the drawing board. Remember, our party was only a year old that time. Now it's only two years old. So what we did was we went back and then look at what are the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats that the party is facing, because you must understand that the new political players also emerge. And especially for the regional council local authority elections, we assumed that there will be a lot of associations, the rapiers, associations, etc. So we went back to the drawing board and we designed a strategy. For example, uh, when we first started, especially in Hardap region, mm. I remember myself and Bernardo Suarbo in 2017, 2018, when we had meetings there, we could only get 100 or 150. But what the Hardap regional people, more especially Marendal, did, which I must applaud them is that with the latest meeting that they had, the stadium was so full, we were also overwhelmed mm. because in during a short space of time, our grassroots people and our committees at, in, in Mariental were able to, to spread the message yeah. of, of LPM. Mm. So people bought in. Other strategy is that also we capitalize on our exploits in parliament. Yeah. At least we use that uh, platform to try to advance uh, what LPM is thinking of in terms of the social economic development of the country. Yeah. So it seems to have been accepted by the people generally mm -hmm. that uh, whatever we are doing in parliament is generally finding resonance amongst the people. The other issue is the mistakes, the own goals by yeah. the ruling party. Yeah. For example, the statements by the president on the white people, the comments by Alfredo Hengari with regards to what has uh, the BDF done in, in Zambezi. It was very insensitive for him to say that. The other issue is the comments by uh, the SG, Shaningwa. We actually laugh at because she has no strategy, no idea what she's doing. And the things like we control the cake backfire. The same with Hilma Nikanor, their spokesperson. Mm. You see, and these are all kind of the Politburo people. Mm. They, they, they have actually essentially brought Swabo down. Mm. And, and, and lastly, Ndilimani. Ndilimani did us a favor by playing that foolish music that they always play and dance with. The one that says that uh, I'm older than your mother, mm. uh, Henny uh, Fuchek. Now that thing has made people angry because mm. our leader Swabo's mother passed away last year and mm. Ndilimani is here trying to make a mockery out of it. So. They did us a huge favor. And also the messaging mm. of the ruling party this time around was not clear. Mm. Because how do you write, we hear you, after having fish rod case 
for example, two of your ministers are in jail. Now you come, it's like me, I'm married, I go, drink, Friday, come back on Sunday. And then when my wife asked me, where have you been? I, I ignore her, ignore her. And on my way to the bedroom, I say, my wife, I hear you. It's very arrogant. It's very rude. In fact, you don't do such messaging in politics. So Swapo's own goals, including our improved presence mm. on the ground, Indeed. assisted us greatly. Indeed. Now, you have dominated the South. You have dominated, you have won um, a constituency here in the mm. commerce region, mm. um, Vindukur Vindu Vindu um, which, who's, I mean, th that Vindukur also shares essentially the same demographics as the South. How do you make LPM a more national party than a Southern based party or a party that attracts a particular ethnicity? Uh, how do you move from there now to say, okay, we have now captured the South? We are now going to spread uh, northward, eastward, to westward if, like if, that. If you look at, I think it's a misanalysis. If you look at, especially uh, since independence, we have scored one of the highest local authority seats and also the regional councils. Yes. Now, if you look at Ogakarara, for example, we never had a presence there. Yes. We have a seat. In Ocho, we have a seat. That's now Kunene. In Korikas, we have a seat. You're a, you're, if, a, you're a Konene guy yourself. If, yes, and, and if you go to Vetfle, we have a seat. Leonard Vell, Hobapes, Swakopmund, Wolfis Bay, and so on. So our spread is wide. It's only that when, when, when you are marketing a product, it might not be well accepted at this particular point in a particular area. Yeah. But over time, it, it develops. So the, the misconception, look, um, previously, when Hilma Nikanor was the constituency councillor yeah. of uh, Kedmans of Eben yeah. and David Boyce and the others, Swapo used to get 100% in Karas. Mm -hmm. Now, why is it wrong? Because of the lack of development, the arrogance of the ruling party, and the insults that President Hage Kengo used to give to people. If these same people who were voting 100% for Swapo turned against Swapo now, now they are voting a new political formation called LBM. Yeah. I don't think that is anything to do with ethnic politics. Simply, yeah. when they were voting Hilma Nikanor for 10, 15 years, it was fine. Yeah. But now suddenly, because they are now voting LPM, it's wrong. It's the same with IPC, for example, if you look at it. How come they did not win overall? Hmm. South or Konene and so on. Yeah. How come they only won, let's say, in Orange Moon, for example, yeah. or Swak, uh, Valfrey Spey, but with a specific... So now, and Swapo. How come it was rejected everywhere? Let's go to Gunene. If you look at PDM and, 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 and uh, UDF, last five years ago, Swapo was ruling in Korikas. Mm. But today they lost to UDF. Yeah. So the, the peop I think the Namibians are becoming more aware, yeah. not only of the external political environment that plays itself out here. Yeah. In terms of politics, economics, socioeconomic issues, they are becoming aware. Globalization is also taking root, and people are moving away increasingly yes. from Swapo because of corruption. Yeah. They must address corruption, lack of leadership yeah. also that you find in, in, in the ruling party and elsewhere. So people have begun to move away. Look yeah. at Omaheke. Yeah. Nuto regained this, the constituencies that Swapo was governing from. Yeah. So if you want to analyze like that, it becomes not only dangerous because you have to apply it to all. Why yeah. did Swabo only one also? But, that is, but that's exactly what I was exactly. going to ask. Mm. That's exactly what I was going to mm. ask you now to say. Swapo has been driven northwards. Yes. Um, are those voters not as affected as others elsewhere in the country that they continue to vote for Swapo? Or what is your analysis of that situation? I, I, I think over the it's it's, you know, Swapo has been selling the idea that they are the liberation movement, that they are the only heirs to the throne, yeah. and they have been using Harambe food pensions and others to suppress people there. I think what must happen there is more concentration. Yeah. Uh, our people in other urban centers, for example, like Vendu, they, they are very much vigilant here. They read, they have access to uh, the theaters, they have access to songs, they have access to books, like they can buy books and read. Mm. And also the, the, the media also plays a role. Mm. They have urban working class decided to reject. But in the regions now where they are more or less homogeneous. They have been using culture 
to suppress our people. Mm. They have been saying, no, we fought Swabo. White people will come back and take your land. That thing has actually backfired. Mm. Now Swabo is like ZANU-PF, pushed to the rural areas mm. where you might find high literacy rates also, yeah. high poverty, high unemployment, high ignorance mm. of, of, of or, and, and so on. So that's interesting part. ZANU is now also a rural party. It's exactly what is happening to Swabo. And it's also what is going to happen to ANC. Yeah. They are becoming, they will become more and more a, a rural party. Mm, mm, mm. I hear you. Now, the, let's talk about then the, the, the remarks that we've, we've been seeing lately uh, from Swapo leaders. Um, um, uh, we saw it during the campaigns last week on social media. There was something again circulating where Swapo leaders seem to suggest that they're going to frustrate a Swapo League leader used the word frustrate, they're going to frustrate uh, the opposition control a areas to ensure that um, the opposition, like yourselves in the South, do not access uh, resources required to effect development. Uh, how are you going to mm. navigate your those, way? Th those comments it? are bordering on what we call ethnic cleansing. It's bordering on human rights abuses because all Namibians contribute to the treasury yeah. in one way or other yeah. through tax so whoever takes over at the at that level at the national level must share resources equitably amongst all namibians so yeah. that comment um we are taking it up seriously we have to consider to approach the united nations based here mm. so that we can see because it's a situation like the rohingya that we are witnessing in Myanmar and other parts of the world. So we need to take that seriously and also to say that we need to meet the finance minister. For example, that issue is real. Mm. Let's say 90 million is going to Oshakati Town Council and Ketmas of Town Council between two to five million or at best maybe 10 million. So that disparity must be addressed. Mm. So for anyone having to suggest that, that they are going to slash development uh, uh, budget Mm. two regions mm. is gonna face with us and we are challenging anyone anyone even that useless boy that you are mentioning that he must dare it to do it we are mm. going to face off each other i know SADC is useless AU is useless but at the united nations level we are going to raise international campaigns that there is ethnic cleansing going on in namibia because you can punish voters mm. because they didn't vote for, for for me or for the ruling party mm. that one will be an unfortunate thing and it will even further ensure that Namibians will end up hating Swabo forever. Yeah, yeah. So once they do that, it will be a terrible mistake. We are not going to sit back. We are going to launch international campaigns against the ruling Swabo. Mm. And it will be turned amount to ethnic cleansing because we are punishing. Because in terms of geography, you know the, the majority inhabitants there that are living there. Mm. So it will be seen as ethnic cleansing. It will be seen as a genocide. Yeah. And we are not going to make a mockery about that. That might even lead to a civil war. Yeah. So the youth leagues of this world that are so useless, they did not even help their party to win anything, must be careful. Mm. And I hope the Secretary General and, and what is that man, uh, Hage Kengo, will take up this issue very seriously. The <laughs> other one is when it comes to development mm. funding. Mm. I hope the president fires or removes her governor of Hartap and Karas mm. because they have a different outlook on development compared to LPM. So LPM must now come and implement its development manifesto fully without hindrance. Mm. The first thing is why would even our councillors go and listen to a guy like Mentos, Mentos April or what is the governor's name in Karas? I don't even know. I forgot her name. So now why should they do it? Because they don't, the, the visions don't align itself. So yeah. we have got our own pace of development program so that then we are saying, President, we are going to give you these two names mm. to appoint in Hartab and Karab. Karas, we don't want your person. Mm. Mm. So that must be the goal so that we can work together peacefully. Mm -hmm. Because remember, we said we are not going to take revenge yeah. or alienate anyone. But the issue here is the whoever is appointed as governor must understand our development manifesto indeed i have two quick subjects to, to address with you um on the time that we are, we are left with 
So one is coalitions. The, it's the buzzword now. Everybody's talking about coalitions. Uh, the city of Windhoek is expected to appoint the, the mayor on, on, uh, on Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, what is LPM's uh, position going into this kind of coalitions, uh, especially with the city of Windhoek, our capital city? Mm. Look, uh, th there are two things as far as LPM is concerned. The, the first one is the programmatic agenda. What is the socio-economic agenda that we wish to achieve yeah. in terms of what we have told ourselves last year in the manifesto and also in terms of LPM's manifesto, yeah. which concerns Vendu. So now, if you talk about any coalition, is that let's first start to talk about what must be included under the memorandum of understanding. Yeah. What is our view? For example, LPM is very strong on land audit. We want to conduct land audit in Vendu, irrespective of minister or what, what. And strong businesswomen, Chinese business people that are owning huge tracts of lands here. We must have a land audit. What is our position on the financial audit, for example, yeah. of the city of Vendu? Mm. Vendu's uh, budget is more or less five billion. So I understand much of the money goes on legal expenses and, and marketing and so on. So what is our view with regard to the financial audit? The other one is the human resources audit. We must done, we have to do that mm. because some people are just employed just for the sake of it, not mm. adding value at all. Yeah. And then we have to look at issues like urban land crisis, urban housing crisis, uh, numb power, that seems to be extra arrogant and extra strong. Mm. Numb water, that seems to be extra arrogant. So now we must deal with all those issues before we agree on what sort of a person must be a mayor, deputy mayor, and so on. Yeah. Ours, we are more strongly aligned to the programmatic agenda. Yes. And uh, the other one is APS, anything but swapo. Yeah. Mm, that should be the coalition. Mm. We don't want anything or we don't want nothing to do with Swapo. Mm. Uh, imagine LPM working with visit Francina Kahungu, who was a former mayor. Ah, no, there is nothing there <laughs> that our people will learn. So we don't want anything to do with those people, Koenanis and all those small things that they have. So nothing, APS, anything but Swapo. But our coalition agreement, the MOU, must have strong agenda points. <laughs> mm. So. <laughs> So, what can you say about this uh, circulating information? Um, what is the authenticity of the information that uh, you, you LPM have agreed, in principle, to have uh, your, dep your one of your members as, a, as deputy mayor to Job and Panda? No, is those are f it's fake news. We've never met any of the, the partners except phone calls. Yeah, I remember I've spoken to Amopanda twice. Warbo spoke yesterday afternoon, and Ims Nashinge called we spoke but what we're saying is that look they will meet during the course of the day or tomorrow early morning yeah uh, with designated persons that they need to talk with i know i'm aware mm. yesterday that ar and ptm and uh, ipc met mm -hmm. so maybe out of that then these things have emerged but ours is before we you see uh, i've never seen in the uh, negotiations yeah you don't start to talk about names first yeah you must first have a program that you must work on. Yeah. What does it help? You don't have any program. Yeah. Uh, of course, LPM has a program. We have our manifesto. But what does it help? You sit and discuss anything. And then tomorrow you get a position and then you don't know what, yeah. to, what to implement. Then it's same like uh, swap or returning mm. from the back door. So ours is, as I said, the MOU must have all these things, land audit, financial audit, HR audit, urban housing crisis, all those things must follow each other. Yeah. And based on that, we can say, all right, maybe Toivo is the best one. Yeah. And also the other models could be explored. I don't know what is the fuss about mm. who and who must get the, the mayoralship. Yeah. It must be a rotational thing Yes. because it's a coalition. Yeah. So this year, maybe party A, next year party B, the other year party C. Yeah. So I don't see any crisis why there must be a fuss about these type of things. Indeed. And the final question to you, Henny, is then, that uh, the minister, the line minister uh, to local authorities, that is the minister of uh, urban and rural yes. development, mm. has some constitutional powers, some mm. overarching uh, constitutional powers that we've seen being applied at Rundu, for example, mm. in Okahanja last year, where a minister decides we are going to remove all councillors of Rundu, Rundu Town Council, both those that belong to my party as a minister, 
mm. and those that belong to the opposition. Imagine the same scenario arising in the south where the minister just decided, uh, Erastus Sutoni decides mm. uh, we are going to remove all the LPM uh, councillors of Marianto, for example. That, that's mm. a very dangerous precedent. Yeah, I, I think that law and, and that specific thing where they have given a minister uh, uh, overwhelming powers needs to be reversed. We must amend that yeah. particular law because in a democracy, maybe when they thought Swabo in this instance is that they had uh, this funny idea that they will rule forever. They even say until Jesus comes. I think that way the blasphemy is the one that shampok them now. So that thing must be removed. Any minister must not have overwhelming powers mm. to decide on a small uh, type of a micromanagement of a local authority. They, their task yep. must be to influence policies to come with new laws and to be innovative and not to do administrative jobs of let those that reside with the local authority councillors. Yes. The appointment of a CEO, why must the a particular local authority and the minister, the minister must finally approve. Mm -hmm. That was jobs for comrades policy. Mm -hmm. And the fear that maybe a person that does not agree with Swabo or is not a member of Swabo must not apply. So that thing is okay. In fact, it needs to be revisited in the Constitutional Court or the Supreme Court so that these things must be changed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's wrong. That's why we have the fish rod problem today. Mm. A simple gentleman go, Saki Shangala, changed laws with one minister that is now in, in parliament. And then they went and create their own networks. And today, what happened to the country? We say thanks to Al Jazeera and that uh, Icelandic guy who served as a whistleblower. Yeah. Otherwise, Saki Shangala would have been here with his ass or talking too much yeah. until he even... Uh, Swabo ends up even losing more than local authorities. Yeah. And that is what we don't want. Ministers must not have such overwhelming powers. Namibia is becoming more and more of a democracy. Yes. We are opening up. Uh, we are consolidating democracy now. And as part of that going forward, we need to change things yeah. and be innovative so that we don't hold each other just like that. Indeed. Honey, thank you very much for coming through. Today. Thanks for inviting me. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's... Uh, Henny Saibep uh, is the deputy leader of the Landless People's Movement, of course, reflecting on uh, his party's amazing uh, performance in this election, uh, where the party has officially won uh, 11 constituencies and might uh, win another one, depending on, of course, how the mar mar rural constituency results will go. But uh, otherwise, uh, thank you for watching and good night.